This is Fisher's Farm. Today it's where most people in New Addington come to throw away their rubbish. But some years ago, it resounded to a quite different sound than that of the engines of refuse trucks. The old barn here was one of the places where the Baptists used to meet. One of those first worshippers was a man called Sidney Orris. He was one of those who was instrumental in building up the church. And before he died, he wrote down some of his memories of those early days. started the Sunday school there one afternoon with three teachers and nine children. The following week there were 18 and each week it doubled until the numbers reached 50. Then we got more ambitious. We thought we would like to start an evening service. This we did still using the barn, which by this time was getting rather knocked about by marauding children. So much so that the rain used to pour in through the roof and we had to put up umbrellas on occasions and we had to provide our own heat the stove having finally given up we had to carry our own heat with us such as a Vala oil stoves it was from that I got the name of the man with the lamp sometimes walking along with the stove still alight because it was so cold Fred Goodyear, who is still a member of the church today, was one of those children in the first Sunday school and still recalls those days. A friend of mine, I called for him to come out to play and he said, oh, I've got to go to Sunday school. And my parents have sent me round to the Orises, whoever they are. And uh, having no one else to play with, so I decided I would go as well. I was 10 years of old. 10 years of age then, a uh, time when most young people are thinking of packing up Sunday school up here, but uh, I was just joining. And we went round to number 38, Aldridge Crescent, and I took part in this Sunday school. My class was on the staircase, because there were so many children there, they had classes all over the place, and we were literally treading on each other, and... Uh, being very disgruntled from time to time because of the crush. Um, any particular lesson, I just remember feeling um, rather strange that there were so many people there. The times I liked best were when we came together to sing. And uh, whether you would call it melodious or not, we certainly made a lot of enthusiastic noise, as you can imagine, in a small house. Two weeks after I joined, <laughs> they decided, or they managed to find uh, this hut attached to the silo on Fisher's Farm. And it was over there that the um, school really started to mushroom. So, um, well, he, he was kind of uh, a very jovial sort of chap until you stepped out of line and then you suddenly saw the other side of him. Um, he was a fatherly sort of figure one that you could not help but respond to. Although responding to him was not part of the game that we played at Fisher's Farm. You see, right next door to the hut was this large silo with a circular stairs that went up to the top. And if you were lucky, you could drop out of sight and crawl through the door and spend all the Sunday school time up the top of the tower. Um, until they mounted a guard over the bottom to prevent us doing it. I remember being there. We had a teacher who was blind. He was a London City missioner and attached to our group. Um, I think his name was Tolhurst or something like that. 
But uh, I can remember him standing in front of us saying, I've seen the light. And I couldn't quite make this out because the man was blind. He walked with a stick. Um, how he could see anything, light or dark, was beyond me. And of course the years have enlightened me and I also have seen the light. The work of running a Sunday school and evening services was getting to be a bit of a strain. So it was decided to turn to the London Baptist Association for help. They arranged for a meeting between the leaders of the new Addington Church and those in other churches in East Surrey. They recognised the importance and potential of the work that was being done and agreed to pay the stipend for a full-time worker to help the church establish and grow. Sister Elsie Druitt had just completed her training at the Baptist Women's College and was appointed to the new Addington Project. We only did two years then, but, uh, you know, you don't want to um, keep on studying, you want to get out and do something. And uh, yes, it was quite exciting and I could see that it was going to be quite a challenge. So. I, I became a Christian, I felt, because of all the teaching that I had received in the Girls Brigade. So to me, um, this was an organisation that uh, if we could get um, the girls on the estate to um, come together and we could establish a brigade company, um, we would begin to, um, you know, teach them basic Christian um, principles. We, we really had to start it in the homes of people. At that time, there was nowhere that we could um, find. We couldn't get a hall at all then. So there was a, a shell of a shop um, on the parade that hadn't been, I don't know what it had been previously, but it was quite just a shell. And I found out who was responsible for it and asked if we could have the girls' brigade in that um, shop there, I suppose for about 12 months. I can't remember exactly times, but we met there for about 12 months and then we were told we'd have to leave because they were going to turn it into a shop again. And uh, so I went to the council, I went backwards and forwards to about uh, Croydon to see if there was anything we could have. And that was how we uh, were allowed to use what they called Fisher's Farm, which was across the field, a bit further on than the silo, but um, it was a farmhouse and they decided that they'd use it for youth work. So we had the use of the farmhouse for, I don't know, a few more years, I think. So, I mean, there weren't any social workers in those days. I didn't have a telephone, but um, I got letter after letter, would I call and see these people that were coming, because they were arriving into new homes with no money, and, you know, it was, they, they just didn't build a church without God, uh, because the church... Uh, the people of God, and uh, he he gave the vision, and he gave people faith to keep going when things were very difficult. The six years that we just worked, going from house to house, having meetings, and uh, struggling to get places to have the youth work and so on. It, it was all hard work. Every bit of equipment had to be uh, fetched and carried. I, I was fortunate that I, I got into digs with an old lady who was very tolerant of all the equipment that I brought into the house. And we just had to carry all our equipment backwards and forwards wherever we were, in the school, in the community hall, in, um, well, just wherever we were going. And so it was all very hard work, but we were all young, which uh, helped that once we had our own building, then we would be able to um, function as a body of Christ people in the centre of the estate. Looking forward um, <clears throat> for so many years to the day when we would be um, laying a foundation for a church. And so it was just a day that was full of 
excitement and expectation, really. And it was good to have all the young people there sharing in it. Then, when builders were allocated, um, I don't know whether it was by number of bricks or the value of money they could spend on bricks, and when you exhausted it, you had to stop work. And that happened in the middle of the building um, being put up. And so we had a spell when we nothing was being done because our allocation had expired. So that was a bit of a, um, a time of frustration. Um, but um, we knew this was happening everywhere, everybody. Um, well, they had the limits on um, uh, bricks, and then so that church being opened, the floor hadn't been laid, and I remember that was quite a, a worrying time, that uh, we were being assured that it would be down in time, and um, it was, of course, and um, to be quite honest, I, I cannot recall too much about that day at all, except that um, what was the side door was um, opened by um, Cyril Black. I think the eight years that um, I was privileged to uh, work with the people in New Addington um, gave me a vision of what the future church could become because people were willing to work together under ongoing difficult situation. When Sister Elsie arrived, the church began to meet in Overbury School. All that's left of that now is the old caretaker's house. The rest of the site has been redeveloped as housing. But even then, the need for a building was apparent, and Sister Elsie and the growing congregation began to think about how it could be done. But even with borrowed premises, the work of the church developed rapidly. In 1949, a boys and girls brigade were formed, which along with the Sunday school grew quickly. The East Surrey Baptists gave their full support to the fledgling church, commending it to all free church adherents around. The town of New Addington was also developing rapidly at this time, and as part of that, the church was allocated a plot of land on which to build their new premises. The church buildings were originally going to be erected here, but the council had other plans. After some negotiation, the church agreed to have another site in Arnhem Drive, not that far away. Building is an expensive business. The estimated cost of the scheme was £8,000. Not a great deal in today's terms. But for the 20 or so members that were here then, this was a huge amount. Before the war, Mays Pond Baptist Church in South East London had closed down. The London Baptist Association decided that the proceeds from the sale should go to the new Addington project. And the dream was becoming more and more a reality. In November 1953, the stone laying ceremony was held. And by May the following year, the building was opened by the Wimbledon MP and well-known Baptist Cyril Blank. It was two years later that the church was formally constituted at a service arranged to coincide with the anniversary of the building's opening. And it was also this year that having seen the church established and founded, Sister Elsie Druitt felt it right to move to another appointment. The next 12 years saw a succession of three ministers, each making their own contribution. H.J. Bennett in 1956, Eric Betridge in 1959, and Malcolm Piper in 1962. In 1968, 
Sister Winifred Waller was called to the charge. We had a vision of New Addington for Christ, not just the both ends, um, but that whole centre section um, that we, we hardly touched in my time. I hadn't got a very good name when I was there, and I used to get cross when people talked about New Addington. They'd been having a, a difficult time, um, but there was such potential there, and we had support from the East Surrey group. I, I think tribute ought to be paid to the East Surrey group. They helped when Elsie was there, and through the years, they provided a minibus for us while I was there. They did a lot of work, you know. And, um, by the time I retired, I mean, we'd accumulated some money, and again, we'd had wonderful support. Um, they had to start getting new estimates because it was just when everything escalated. And so, that hall eventually, just the what the extension they got cost far more than we could have had more done. We would, we could have had a hall with a flat on top. Fantastic, the way God provided, all through the um, all through the years. Uh, and if you looked up the records, you probably would find. I think our offerings when I first went uh, were about twelve pounds a week. And when we passed twenty pounds for the first time, we thought that was wonderful. <laughs> uh, and then, when you know, they had a thank offering of a hundred pounds, something. Uh, oh, God, yes, I, I just thank God for those years. I had felt that most of my ministry had been um, sowing seeds, um, and when I got to New Addington, which was the last church in which I was full time. Um, and I entered into a time of reaping, of other people sowing, and we, we had tremendous blessing in those days. With growth in numbers, there also came an increase in the size and scope of activities, catering for the elderly, those with physical disability, men's and women's groups, as well as the continuing boys and girls brigade, and the youth and children's work. The church was outgrowing its premises, and the time had come to build again. Inflation had quite some impact, and those who had needed £8,000 to erect the first church building now needed to find nearly 40000 to extend it. Although the need was realised during Sister Winifred's ministry, it was with the arrival of the Reverend Graham Thompson in 1975 that the construction work began. The experience which he gained in industry before becoming a minister proved to be invaluable and very soon the buildings which you see here today came into being. But the story of a church is not a story of buildings. It's a story of a group of people growing stronger together in the work of God's kingdom. The developments in our buildings are simply landmarks in that story of a group of people who have grown in faith and are seeking to share that faith with the community in which they find themselves. That commitment is no less evident today. I came to the church just over a year ago and was formally inducted as minister in July 1993. The situation that I've come to is very different to the one which Sister Elsie faced 40 years ago. Times have changed. We live in a high-tech computer age. But the message and the commitment of New Addington Baptist Church remains the same. That's not to say that we haven't moved with the times. But we believe that the fundamentals of God's message are as relevant to today's world as they were to the world of Mr. Orris and Mr. Reed when they first shared the vision to establish a Baptist church in New Addington. The buildings today look quite different to how they must have looked 40 years ago when they were first opened. But we are still committed to offering a range of activities which seek to meet the needs of our community and to share the reality of God's love with them. 
giving care and support to those who need it, speaking out when issues require it, providing activities and guidance for our young people, caring together and sharing together in the work of God's kingdom. The story of this church is a witness to that God-given vision which those pioneer members had over 50 years ago. It is a reminder too of the importance of association. The vision of the few became a reality because they shared it with the many other Baptists in the London area. But most of all, it is a witness to the glory of God who has made all this possible.